Okay, so in this next video, we're going to discuss a further topic in addition to union and intersections called the complement. And so the complement is everything that's not in a set. So this can get a little tricky. So there are a few things we want to uh, note first. So we call the complement a set A contains everything that's not in the set. So we can notice the word not as a keyword for the um, complement of a set. The other part is the notation. So notice that A uh, superscript C here. The C stands for complement, and the A is the set A with the C complement. So we say um, A complement or the complement of A, something like that. There are other ways that we write it, the complement, and that's A with a, like, it looks like an apostrophe, but in mathematics we call it a prime. And so we say A prime, and then sometimes with a little tilde, and we say not A. Anyways, these three um, all mean to have the same meaning. It means the complement of set A. However, in this, in these notes, we use A superscript C as the complement. That's the one we'll use. And actually, in the next chapter, we use the tilde for uh, logic symbols. So that's why we want to use just this one for sets. Okay, so when we say everything that's not in the set. That is literal. So uh, in this next example, I took the same three sets of color, but um, now we're going to go ahead and find B complement intersection with C and A intersection with B complement. So um, here, let's go ahead and first look at the complement of B. And then we'll go ahead and intersect it with C and then A. B complement literally means everything not in B. So every color that we see here in our sets, whatever colors are in B, those are the ones that I don't want, right? All the other colors is what I want. I want all the colors that are not in B. So here, if I notice that orange, so I'm going to look at set A and set C and pick all the colors in those sets that are not in B. I do notice that I have an orange, brown, purple, and green in set B. So I'm going to go through set A and set C and pick all the colors that are not orange, brown, purple, and green. So right away I see set A and I see orange and orange is in B so I can't take that color because that's in B. I'm looking for colors that are not in B. I look at yellow. I see yellow is not in B and that is in B complement. So that's our first element that's not in B. Red, is red in set B? No. So that is a color not in B and therefore it's part of the set. Blue, is blue in B? No. So blue is not in B and therefore in the set. All right, let's try set C. I see pink, is pink in B? No, pink is not in B and therefore is in the complement set of B. Brown, is brown in B? Yes, I see it right here. And if brown is in set B, then I can't include it in the set because I'm only looking for colors that are not in B. Um, red is next, and I went ahead and already included that one. Yellow as well. And now we look at the next color, orange. And orange is in B, and therefore I can't include it in the set because I'm only looking for colors that are not in B. And then the last one is purple, and purple is in B, and I cannot include purple in the set because it's in B. So now I have the set that is the complement of B 
meaning all the colors in my sets that are not B, that are not in B, is yellow, red, blue, and pink. That's the first step. The second step is now is to take B complement and intersect it with C. So if I take B complement, which is yellow, red, blue, pink, and intersect it with set C, that means I'm just looking for the common colors between the complement and in set C. So yellow is in the complement of B and in C, and therefore in the intersection. Red is in the complement of B, but also in C, and therefore red is in the intersection. Blue is in the complement of B, but not in C, and therefore blue is not in the intersection. Um, pink is in C and in the complement, and therefore in the intersection. So taking B complement, intersecting it with set C, gives me the colors yellow, red, pink. Now if I look for A intersection B complement, once again, I'm looking for the intersection and the common colors between set A and the complement of B. So um, if I see the complement of B and set A, I do notice that I don't have orange in both, right? So I can't include that in the intersection. I do see I have yellow in both set A and the complement of B. So yellow will be in the set for the intersection. Um, I see uh, red, that's in both. That's in the intersection. And blue in both, so that is the intersection. And a blue, pink, a blue is the last one, so that's it. So once again, once we identify the complement, meaning all the colors not in B, then we can find intersections with other sets. So I just want to emphasize because it is tricky on the words, right? So all the colors not in B, but in A and C were yellow, red, blue, pink. And I can intersect them with each of the other sets to get another set. So you can see there's so many um, sets that we could have from just like one master set of colors, right? And then we can have all these subsets. But now I want to think about it just a little bit further, right? So now I think about, well, what do you mean all the colors that are not in B? All the colors not in B are a lot of colors way beyond the colors that we see in set A and C. In fact, isn't magenta not in B? I don't see magenta, and magenta's a color, and I don't see that color in A and C. And I'd be like, oh, you're absolutely correct. Um, cyan, cyan is not in any of these, and also not in the in the sets A and C. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of colors that are not in set B. Now that doesn't automatically designate set A and set C to be the sets that we use, the co only colors that we use in the complement. Right, so there are a lot of colors that are not in set B, that are not included in set A and C. So we have to be careful in how we use this, like everything that's not in the set, because essentially, if I just said find everything that's not in set B, you would obviously say, well, there are a lot of more colors, Darlene, but wouldn't there be a lot more other colors? Um, I have fuchsia and also other things like puppies and peanut butter. Wouldn't you agree that puppies is not in set B? I don't see puppies here. Peanut butter, I don't see peanut butter in set B. Right? There are you're like, wait, there's a there's the whole world that's not in set B other than those four colors, right? So I uh, you but you're like, but you're not really talking about 
peanut butter and puppies and animals and food, you're only, your whole thing is about colors, Darlene. So stay within the context, right? Don't go on a tangent. And I would say, I totally agree. So here, this is why we need to start introducing what we call the universal set. We don't want puppies and peanut butter to be in the complement set of B. We want to stay on context, right? We want to stay on the context of color, right? And maybe just not the colors that we list, but all the colors that exist except in um, set B, right? So the, the universal set's going to do that for us. It's going to say, no, 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 don't pick puppies and peanut butter for your complement. We'll go ahead and be in the context of everything, and the universal set will be the set that contains all the elements um, defined by the context. So exa for example, um, from example 3.7, we know the universal set is Um, colors. So, you know, like we have this, uh, let's just look at this circle of like colors. We have all these colors, right? And then we have these subsets here. Here's A, B, C, and then A, B, and C are these colors, have these colors in here. Right, because they all share some, they all share or, um, orange. And so we have this like little intersection here. So that the universal set will be like the bigger set in context of what our problem. And so we just need to be able to define that. For example, if we have a set of books, what might the universal set be for a set of books? Well, you're like a set of books. Well, the universal set is um, the set of all books in the library. So if I make a set of books, that's too ma too much like all, all over the world and grabbing all the books in the entire world that may be too much for a universal set maybe I'm maybe I'm only going to the Santiago Canyon College Library and therefore I'm only looking at the books in this library I'm not looking at the books all from the entire libraries all over the world right or bookstores and online I'm just looking at a set of books in these libraries so again we just want to be able to keep the universal set in context of what we're doing and in the problem. So like a set of friends on a social media site, we could think of the universal set to be the set of friends on a platform like um, Facebook. So maybe not all my friends from all my social media sites in the entire world, right? It's just like, okay, I'm just looking at my Facebook friends and, and that's the context. Now, there are some sets of these universal set, of course, could be um, from Facebook could be my family that are my friends, right? And then my college friends and my high school friends. So again, we have a lot of subsets and these high school friends could be your college friends, right? There could be some intersection. So a set of numbers, um, well, this could be so many possibilities, right? What could be the universal set? So the set of, we'll say all real numbers. Right. So again, we just want to be in the context of our problem with the universal set, and that could even be narrowing it down even further besides, oh, a set of all books in the whole world, right? Say, okay, well, just the, you know, the Santiago Canyon College Library is enough. That's, that could be my universal set. That way it's, a, it's targeted. And same thing with like the media site, we would target and subset because it's just too, it gets overwhelming when it's too, ma too many and too vague. 
Okay, so if we look at the complement now with regards to a universal set, we usually look at the complement of a set that is not an A, but in the universal set. So now we're contained. So I said in this next example, the universal set, then let it be the digits one through nine. And if set A is one, two, four, what is the complement? So remember that the complement of set A means all the numbers that are not in A, but in the universal set. So if A is one, two, and four, this would leave three, five, six, seven, eight, nine to be in the complement set. So notice that the universal set in this case was digits one through nine, and our set A were digits one, two, four. So even though our set A was one, two, four, we didn't put puppies and peanut butter in our universal. We kept in the context of our problem. In fact, we kept it on the, we didn't say one through 100, we said one through nine. So it did keep it, it targeted a smaller set. So let's say, um, how about the integers from one to 20, and then there's set A and set B, and we can find the following. So now, so now what we can do is now mix this all up. We could do unions, intersections, complements, all together. We love each, we love everything, right? And so the first thing we would see is B complement. And so if I wanted to go ahead and identify the complement first, you can. So what I want is all the numbers that are in the universal set, not necessarily A, right? Just everything that's not in B. So I'm just looking at the universal set, the subset B, and taking everything out of the universal set and only grabbing what's left, right? So I'll take all the numbers from set B, take them out of the universal set, and then whatever is not in B is what's left over, right? So if one is in set B, then it is not in the complement, right? Because it's in B. I'm looking for only numbers one through 20 that are not in B. So one, two, three, so notice not until I get to four do I get a number not in B. And then five, six, seven, eight, nine is in B, 10 is not, 11 is in B, so 12, 13, and then 14, 15, 16's in B, so 17 has to be in the complement, and 18, and it stops because 19 and 20 are in B. So now, if I take B complement, I can go ahead and intersect that with A. So now take all the elements that are in B and intersect it with A. Find now the common elements between the complement of B and A. So let's look for the common elements between B complement and A. So um, the common elements, I don't see four, I see five. Let's see, seven, eight. I see 10 and 12. 15, 16, 20, nope. So I only have in the intersection, the elements that are common in A and B complement are 5, 8, 10, 12, 15. So it is a process, but as long as we keep organized mentally, we could probably do this in our head. So for example, if I wanted to do B intersection with A complement, I would look for common elements not in A but in B. That's what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for all the numbers between one and 20 that are not in A, um, but also in B. So I'm gonna look for the universal set, take out all the elements in A, and then see which ones are in common with B. So I could do, I could automatically see now what's gonna happen. I would see is two, um, two is in A, 
right? And so, and then I cannot pick that as part of the intersection. It's not in the complement. So I cannot use any of these numbers here for this set here. Why? Because it's in the complement. It can't, so the elements in here will not be in this, but only in B. So I need to find common elements in B and the A complement. So if we can do this a little ment mentally, let's do this. So I'm looking for the intersection. So whatever numbers I pick, they're going to be in B. Not all of B will be in the set, but I can just double check it and make sure the numbers I pick are the ones in B, but not in A. So let me start with one. I look at one, I see one is in B and is number one in A? No, right, it starts at two. So if one is in B but not in A, then one has to be in this set because one is in B but not in A. So let's do number two, let's do the next one. So number two, Two is in B, is it in A? Yes, so that means it's not in the complement of A and therefore not in the set. I'm only looking for numbers not in A but in B. So three, three is in B and three is not in A. So three is in B and not in A, that means that it's in this set. Why? Because three is not in A and it's in B. Let's try six. Six is in B and six is not in A and therefore six is in this set because it's not in A but in B. So seven, seven is in B and seven is also in A. So seven cannot be part of this set because seven is in A. I'm only looking for numbers not in A but in B. Nine. Nine is in B and nine is not in A and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the numbers not in A but in B. Let's do the next one. Eleven. Eleven is in B and eleven is in A. So if eleven is in A, then I cannot pick this because I'm only looking for numbers not in A but in B. So fourteen I see is not in A so that will be included in the set. 16, 16 is in B and 16 is in A and therefore I cannot pick 16 because I'm only looking for numbers not in A. 19 is in B but not in A and so that works in our for our set. And 20 is in A and in B and therefore I cannot pick this number because I'm only looking for numbers not in A. So now this is my set. So B intersection AC is this set of 1, 3, 6, 9, 14, 19. Now what you could do is what we did up here, right? And go and find this A complement, take all the numbers out of the universal set and list them that are not in A and then find the common elements like we did here. But I really want you to see and kind of get quicker at it and think about, okay, not in A but in B. And so it's more of mentally organizing. But if it's a little too difficult at first, then write it all out, you know, then, you know, do what's best for you for sure.